Hi everyone, my name is Megan Allen and I'm a lead speech language pathologist for Metropolitan Nashville Public Schools and today I'm going to talk to you about how you can help your child make speech sounds at home and how speech language pathologists work on those sounds in the school setting. So based on a variety of factors, the speech language pathologist that has worked with your child has determined what sounds your child needs to work on and also at what level they are going to work on those sounds at. I'm going to explain what that means now. So typically, speech language pathologists, or what I'm going to call SLPs, work on sounds first at the isolation level. What that is, is just making the sound on its own. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the sound K. And so making that sound in isolation would simply be K, K, K. For some children, this is very simple and they get it the first time. And for others, it takes weeks of practice. After a child has mastered that, we move on to working on sounds and syllables. What that is, is adding a vowel at the front or the end of the consonant that the child is working on. So for example, if you wanted to have the consonant at the end of the syllable, it would be ak, ek, ik, or vice versa, at the beginning, it would be ka, ki, kai. This is just a simple diagram that I draw for children, but you don't have to have this. Once they master at the syllable level, you can move on to words. We typically start with words at the initial position. So what that means is the child's sound is at the initial or beginning of the word. So for example, using K again, cat, kite. Then we typically move on to the sound at the final or end of the word like pack and then eventually in the middle of words or what we call medial position such as chicken. After children master sounds at the word level, we move on to phrases. So those are two words paired with one of the target sounds. They don't have to make sense. So something could be like silly cat or cat runs. Those make sense, but it doesn't have to. From there, children move on to sentences. Your child is gonna have an easier time modeling a sentence that you've provided, then they would be creating their own sentence. So if you see that your child is having trouble carrying over correct production of their sound in sentences, try modeling a sentence or giving them one to repeat after you. After children master sentences, we move on to reading if they are able to read, and that is where a child would read a passage that contains their sounds. From there, we move on to conversation, which is simply what we're doing right now, back and forth in listening to make sure the child carries over that correct production into conversation. If you are unsure what sounds your child is working on or at what level they are working on it with, you can refer to your child's individualized education program. These are updated annually and you should receive a copy. If you do not have a copy or are unsure where it's located during these times, please reach out to your school's speech language pathologist or your child's teacher and we'd be happy to provide you with one. I hope you'll find this helpful and be on the lookout for upcoming videos in the next week or two for how to elicit sounds that your child is working on. Thanks.